it's Hillary and this is another one of my videos for the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. Here I'll be sharing advice directly from the past finalists and semi-finalists. To see the previous videos in this Breakthrough Junior Challenge series, go to the link in the description. There I share all my comprehensive and detailed advice on how to make an entry from how to film, how to choose a topic, how to do your research, everything else. So just go there to know more. So a few weeks ago, I reached out to some friends I made while joining the challenge. And yes, we have made a community out of this competition. So I reached out to them and I asked them if they could give some advice for you guys this year. And they were kind enough to share their experiences, wisdom, and time to help you guys for this year's competition. So let's see what they've shared. Hey guys, so my name is Aisha and I was a global finalist in the Breakthrough Junior Challenge 2019 for my mathematics video on the P versus NP problem and a semi-finalist in 2017 for my physics video on the string theory. What I really want to know is, is there a way to create an algorithm for something more abstract, like luck? That question is the core of the P versus NP problem. Be sure to explore your topic a long time beforehand. I say that because it's really helped me explore the topic from multiple different angles and not leave out a bit of information that ended up being useful to me and be able to communicate that topic in um, an interesting way. So whether it's some obscure research paper or a two hour long lecture, do it. Even if you're not particularly sure about the exact topic and even if that resource isn't completely um, on top of the thing that you know you want to communicate, a lot of times you do find really interesting gems that helps you communicate your topic in a new light or even redirect how you want to communi communicate your topic in a creative way that hasn't been done before. So be open to spontaneity, be open-minded and something beautiful just might come along the way. So the second thing that I would like to recommend is that because this is a science communication challenge, they really value physical demonstration, at least according to my experience. So I think that editing should be used as an enhancement to physical demonstrations that you use, that you have in your video. So I think that exploring it from that perspective allows you to communicate science topics in an interactive way. But don't put up all your worth and all that you can contribute to the science community based on this one competition. There is so much to explore in the world and being able to communicate something hard in science just means that as long as you can keep doing it, you can contribute something really big. You don't necessarily have to have this to have a bright future. And even though this is something that would help you a lot, like I completely understand that, it isn't the only thing that can help you. Think of it as more of a launch pad than a final destination. Second thing is, obviously, don't procrastinate. When you start working on your video a long time before the deadline, it allows you to go over many different iterations and be able to show other people, hey, I made this version of the video, how do you think I should improve it? And as you continuously go along many, many different iterations, you will find that it has drastically improved from your first version up to like, I don't know, your 13th version, as was in my case. So the third thing is that even if you don't necessarily win, being able to partake in the Breakthrough Junior Challenge can often lead to really, really good repercussions. Like as in my case, I was asked to present at Google I.O. Extended, at Google Cloud, at um, TEDx, at TEDx Open Mic. And multiple other different public speaking events within technology and science and i think that that was really valuable to me because it really helped me develop my experience as a communicator um, but also helped me develop my personality and find what's important to me and allowed me to engage with a community that valued technology and science also interestingly i ended up getting an internship at google for this summer um, and I think that the Breakthrough Junior Challenge in my video definitely played a really big role in being able to let me get to that. So even if you don't win, there will always, there will always be something good come out of it as long as you present yourself and put yourself out there like, hey, I did this really cool thing and I didn't win, but I made it this far. And I think that even with that, I can create something really big. 
Hello, my name is Alexander Irwin and I was in the 2017 Breakthrough Junior Challenge along with the 2018 Summer Breakthrough Junior Challenge. But in 2017, I was a finalist in Breakthrough with my video The Many Worlds Interpretation of Quantum Mechanic. Well, the theory states that every time anyone makes a decision where there are at least two outcomes that could happen, separate legitimate worlds are made. This means that there are infinite worlds we are totally unaware of. I learned a lot from doing this and doing that video and the other one as well. I learned a lot about filmmaking and how to make an idea and how to develop it. I'm now a film major and so this gave me a lot of confidence to really say, hey, I really want to do this. I want to get ideas and express them creatively that in a way that people will understand. And so with this, if I could give any advice to my past self or anyone who would like to do this, which I think everyone should, it's an amazing experience, is that get make sure you have an idea, like complex or not, make sure you have a creative idea that would be understandable to like a five-year-old. So in your construction of your video, make sure the way that you put it and the way that you give your examples is understandable to people outside yourself and close family, family and friends. So like, if a five-year-old was shown it, would they be able to understand your video and would it make sense all around? So like, for example, in my 2017 video, I, instead of using Schrodinger's cat because I thought it might be a bit upsetting for a five-year-old to hear about the possibility of a cat dying, I changed it to a phone because that's lower stakes and it's more in pop culture and children will know more about that, even if that's kind of weird. but. Yeah, so just make sure you have a creative, fun idea that you're passionate about and that you care about. But also make sure that the way you explain it in your video could be understood by everybody. And I think that's the best advice I could give myself or someone else. And just have fun with it. It's a super fun experience and even if you don't go far, hey, you did it and it's you now have this as something that you made and that's wonderful all in itself so to everyone who does it good luck i hope you have a good time for all you who think you might want to do it or not sure i'd say give it a try what is there to lose i mean it's just it's so much fun so have a good time and i hope you do well Bye. Hi, I'm Rania and I'm a semi-finalist back in 2016. It is easily calculated using Hubble's law. The formula is V, recessional velocity, is equal to Hubble's constant times distance. As you can see, Hubble's data lacked. My advice for you all who's joining this year is to choose a topic that you absolutely love. Something you know by heart that you're so passionate about. Because at the end of the day, what's more impressive is how is how passionate you are about it and you get to show it and engage the audience talking about the topic that you absolutely love rather than blabbing about super overly complicated things just to seem impressive and cool and you know you're here because you love stem so talk about something you love and then it gives a chance and it gives you a chance to read more research more about it and maybe you'll find new things you'll dig deeper and then that's pretty much it, you know, show your passion. That's my only advice and good luck and I will see all of the videos. Hi, I'm Emily Rapp. I was a semi-finalist in the Breakthrough Junior Challenge in 2016, I believe. You see, when the wheel is stationary, gravity acts on it, causing the top of the wheel to move left and down, causing the bottom of the wheel to move right and up. This is expected. When I spin the wheel, points at the top of the wheel do still fall left and down. First of all, really important is concise wording that's very descriptive and gets the point across really well because like your video can only be, I think it's three minutes long now and that's not a lot of time to get a point across. So make sure that it's engaging and that your listeners, that every word matters. And uh, yeah, then visuals are also extremely important. Uh, don't overdo it on visuals, but make visuals that really drive your point home. Be an engaging speaker. We don't People don't want to listen to a monotone, sad voice. Just keep it light, get excited, because it's something, you're teaching someone something that you love. Like, show that you love it, because people will love what you love.
they're drawn to that. Lastly, it's like have peers edit, have peers help you. My boyfriend's really good at editing, so he actually did a lot of my visuals for me. My teacher would edit my script. He would look at it, help me write it because I was learning a whole new topic that I never delved into before and I want to make sure my phrasing and everything would be great. So make it a group effort. Ask for help. Don't be afraid. Don't make don't feel like you are just confined to this box. Just go outside of the box and do something that is close to your heart that you care about and if you care about it other people will too. That is if I toss my cookie in a fire. It is still retrievable even after it's been destroyed. The burning of my cookie generated a very particular arrangement of ashes, heat and light. So in principle, if we could reverse time, it is possible to reconstruct my cookie atom by atom. Heat and light are released when a star fuses hydrogen into helium. When stars start to run out of fuel, they begin to form heavier elements like iron. They also start to expand. When iron is produced in the core, the star collapses. Out of this, a neutron star remains. Great, we hope you found that helpful. Actually, back when we joined, we didn't have any advice videos of this kind, so we were just kind of grasping in the dark for any information we could get. We hope that through this advice video, we could help you navigate through this process more easily and more smoothly. Also, follow these amazing people on social media if you want. They're all amazing human beings who do really, really cool things. Also, take some time to thank them in the comments if you found their advice particularly useful. Personally, I'd like to thank the friends who took the time and effort to send in these videos just to help this year's challenge participants. So I guess that's it for this video and maybe I'll see you next time.